Hello and welcome to this demo of Prodimax WMS for food production and distribution. During this session, I will take you through a short introduction about Prodimax WMS for sub business one, about GS1 compliance and specific functions for regulated environments, and then I will take you through a demo of the system. If we look at Prodimax WMS, Prodimax WMS consists of a core system, the core warehouse management application, which is linked or integrated transparently with Sub Business One, and which offers a number of additional components or modules to complement its functions. These include the 3PL mod module for third-party logistics, a quality module, production capabilities, warehouse automation, EDI, weighing, connecting to uh, devices and uh, connecting to tracking and tracing systems. The important thing about um, Prodimax WMS for Sub Business One is that it complies with the GS1 uh, industry standards. So GS1 is the global standardization body in the supply and demand chain, <coughs> which has defined a number of identification keys for uh, logistic units and the SSCC or the serial shipment container code for the identification of uh, pallets or other logistic uh, units, the identification of products through the GTIN, the Global Trade Item Number, identification of locations by their GLN or their Global Location Number. You will see during the demo how we apply these standards in uh, our system. And you will also then see how we make use of the GS1 barcodes, so the GS1 EAN14 for the identification of individual products and the GS1 EAN128 for the identification of additional information such as batch numbers, best before dates, quantities and so on. I also want to point out that Prodimax WMS also uh, um, supports the GS1 Ecom, so the uh, electronic messages for um, sending off dispatch advices, for instance, and advanced shipping notifications back and forth between suppliers and customers. Just a quick overview of the GS1 identification keys that are supported by our system. So at the top we have the individual trade item which is identified by the global trade item number. Then we have the identification of a logistic unit that is shipped throughout the supply chain and is identified by the SSCC or the Serial Shipment Container Code. Then we have the identification of locations through their global location number and also the possibility to identify <coughs> returnable assets such as uh, pallets or containers through the GRI or the Global Returnable Asset Identifier. Now, during the demo, we will also highlight a number of specific WMS functions for regulated industries like food and life sciences, which include uh, the uh, possibility to um, have batch management in combination with management of serialized items, the management of uh, use by best before and expiry dates, the uh, concept of shelf life for purchase and sales, the uh, aspect of first expired, first out picking, zone types for conditioned uh, storage, quality statuses, and of course, uh, batch traceability. Now in the uh, demo that will follow now, I will take you through a number of aspects including the configuration of the system with its organizational structure and item master data extensions. I'll take you through the Prodimax inbound logistics process where we'll have goods receipt, put away and inventory reporting. Then I'll take you through the uh, production capabilities of Prodimax WMS, which includes uh, bill of material management, production order management, picking, weighing and uh, production execution. And then finally, we'll take you through the Prodimax outbound logistics uh, process for picking, um, uh, packing and shipping. And I'll demonstrate how all this information is registered in the traceability record of uh, Prodimax WMS. In this uh, first part of the demo, I will uh, talk and show you a number of things with respect to the Prodimax configuration, which uh, implies uh, the uh, Prodimax WMS organizational structure 
and also a number of item master data extensions that have been uh, added by Prodimax WMS to the sub-business one item master data to um, allow for a more advanced uh, logistics management of uh, products. In this first part of the demo, I will go into the configuration of Prodimax WMS and also explain a number of item master data extensions that we have added to the system. If you look at the Subbusiness One application, you see in the main menu of Subbusiness One a module called Prodimax. So that is the administrative module of the uh, Prodimax WMS uh, application. And on the right hand side, you see here the uh, uh, application that runs on an RF terminal and that covers the uh, uh, logistics operations in the warehouse. So you see here that we have uh, operations for uh, the main um, logistics uh, operations, so the inbound logistics operations from purchasing to goods to uh, put away. We have the uh, outbound logistics operations from sales to picking and shipping. We have the internal logistics operation and we have here the link with uh, production. Now, if we turn to the um, um, administrative module of Prodimax WMS, we have got the organizational structure here. And the organizational structure is the engine behind the application. So in the um, uh, organizational structure, we define the layout of the warehouse and also its uh, behavior. Now, it is important to uh, note that um, uh, Prodimax WMS does not use the sub-business one bin locations as these currently do not offer sufficient functionality for advanced logistics uh, management, but we tie in to uh, sub-business one at the level of the warehouse. So the warehouses that you see here are the warehouses that have been defined in sub-business one. So we link into sub-business one at the level of the warehouse. The uh, inventory in sub-business one at warehouse level is exactly, is identical to the inventory in, uh, in Prodimax, but we have a uh, far more detail in managing this, uh, uh, this inventory at the uh, bin level. So if we uh, open up uh, one of our warehouses that we have defined, you see that within the warehouse we can define uh, a number of uh, elements, um, including uh, printers, uh, scanners, uh, and we can also define a number of zones in our warehouse. So for instance, here I have defined a zone for my docks. So the docks where I'm going to uh, ship goods and where I'm going to receive goods. So I have here a number of docks that I have defined and I have also defined what they can be used for. So this is a receiving uh, dock and I have indicated that this is a dock that can be used for unloading of uh, goods. This is a shipping dock on the other hand, and that can only be used for the loading of goods. But I can also create multifunctional docks like a cross dock where I can <coughs> execute receiving operations as well as shipping operations. Then I uh, also have uh, a zone where I'm going to store my uh, product. So here I have a picking zone and in my picking zone I can define um, subzones. In this case I have defined here a number of uh, aisles and in those aisles I can then define the various uh, pick locations. And these pick locations, these can be uh, generic. So this is a generic pick location. It means that I can store whatever product I want to store there, but I can also limit the, um, the, the product that can be stored at a certain location by indicating this. And so in this case, I have indicated that this pick location is reserved for this product and I have also been able to indicate the maximum, maximum quantity that I can store at that location, the minimum quantity that needs to be at the location and the replenish quantity. So the uh, quantity which the system will automatically get from another location and bring to this location when, it, uh, when the quantity drops below the minimum quantity. Okay. Um, what you also, what we all can also can do is that we can define zones of different zone types. In this case, the uh, picking zone is a uh, zone that is of the, uh, the, the type ambient, ambient uh, temperature, as you see here, which means that only products that uh, 
uh, need to be stored in ambient conditions can be stored there. But in this case, I also have here a refrigerator zone. And there I have indicated that the products that need to be stored in this uh, ref, uh, area need to be stored in the refrigerator uh, uh, area. Okay, so if I open uh, up this, uh, this uh, location, there again I see a number of uh, uh, bin locations and I can also define here which products need to be stored at this uh, location. Okay, so in the organization structure we can uh, also define uh, a production uh, zone. So in this production zone I can define uh, a uh, production line, so where I'm going to execute uh, the uh, production uh, operators, uh, operations. And for that production line, I can define input locations, output locations, and rest location. So if I want to start production, then I need to bring products into the uh, input location, and then I'm going to transfer them to the production line, and after they have been uh, uh, produced, they are moved to the production uh, uh, output uh, location. What you also see here is that I have a number of uh, silos and tanks that I can define, so we are able to manage uh, products that uh, are not stored in a warehouse, but that are stored in, for instance, a silo or a tank. So, so bulk raw or bulk liquid uh, ingredients. So if I click on this silo uh, here, you see that this is a silo that has been reserved for a whole wheat flour. And that I've also indicated a minimum and a maximum quantity for storing product at uh, that uh, location. What you also see here is that uh, we have defined in the structure also a weighing room. So if we uh, want to uh, weigh uh, products, we do that in a uh, weighing uh, uh, room. Uh, and there we can uh, define the actual quantity that we're going to use in uh, production. And that is also what I will be demonstrating during the uh, production execution uh, process. Okay, so far for the uh, production uh, zone. Um, we uh, also have the possibility to define in this organizational structure a number of, uh, of parameters and uh, uh, characteristics. So, for instance, um, we can define here the uh, SSCCs, and so the identification of logistic units that we will be using when we receive products in the warehouse, when we produce products in the warehouse, and when we ship products from the warehouse. And this will be the basis for the traceability capabilities of uh, Prodimax uh, WMS. We also have here a number of uh, reports that we can define uh, that can be uh, uh, created in, in crystal reports or another uh, reporting tool and we can associate these reports to specific uh, print events. So in this case we have here a good seat label and we can associate that uh, good seat label to a print event and in this case we see that my report 61, so my good seat label is associated with the uh, uh, event reception of a new logistic unit. Here I can also define the zone types that we um, already uh, spoke about. So you can define whatever zone types you need to, uh, to organize your warehouse and to also make sure that the products in the warehouse are stored at the, um, at the correct uh, location. Then we also have the possibility to uh, define quality statuses. So here I have defined a number of quality statuses and I can define which actions can be executed for a specific um, quality status. And whether, for instance, a product can be uh, shipped or not, whether it can be put on a pick location, whether it can be picked for replenishment and so forth. And, and you can also define the transitions that can occur. So in this case, my um, quality status quarantine can go to rejected, released or blocked. And I've also indicated that <clears throat> um, if uh, someone in the warehouse or, or someone of the warehouse supervisors uh, changes the quality status of a product, uh, the system will ask for a reason and that is also logged into the traceability uh, report. 
Then we also have uh, reasons management. We can define a number of uh, standard reasons that can be uh, used by the uh, uh, by the, the, the operators in the warehouse if they cannot execute an action as it should be. And then they can indicate why, for instance, they have picked a different product than the product that was suggested by the system because, for instance, it, in the, the product that it uh, originally needed to be picked was damaged. And in this way, we have a an, uh, an very... Uh, powerful tool that helps to streamline not only the organization of the uh, warehouse, but also the, its operation. Okay, so let's have a look now at the uh, my Item Master Data extensions in uh, Sub Business One. So if we go to our Item Master Data in uh, Sub and we call Okay, we have a number of uh, products here that we'll be using uh, in the in the demo for uh, receiving and shipping operations and also production operations. So let's take here the beef. So if you look at the uh, item master data sheet of this product, you have here all the uh, sub business one tabs. Very smart. It is an item that is managed by batches. Uh, but in Prodimax, uh, we, it is also possible to combine this with uh, management of uh, by serial numbers, huh? so that if need be, we can have both batch management and serial number management. <clears throat> At the end here, we have the Prodimax tab, and there we have a number of specific characteristics for this uh, product that are managed by the Prodimax WMS application. So you see here that we have indicated that this product has a best before date, We've also indicated that it needs to be stored in the refrigerator uh, area, and this will um, prevent this product from being stored in an, uh, in an area that is not uh, in line with its uh, storage uh, conditions. Um, we also have here the uh, unit of measurement group of the product, so it's in uh, kilogram bag pallet. So we've got 10 kilograms in the bag, and we've got 50 bags on a pallet, makes 500 uh, kilograms. We also have a number of conditions uh, for um, sales. So here we have the um, uh, shelf life for delivery. So what is the shelf life that we have to guarantee to a customer uh, if we deliver this product uh, to, uh, to him? Um, we also have here uh, the purchasing uh, tab where we have the shelf life for reception. Uh, and also the uh, possibility to define a standard expiry definition for reception. So in this case, if we receive this product, we will assume that its expiry definition is one year from the date of, uh, of receipt. Okay. Uh, we also have a number of criteria for production, uh, one of which is the way strategy. So this is a product that we will also be using for weighing operations. And for way strategy, we can then select either a way strategy by order or by item. And this means that if we would have a uh, uh, in a strategy of weighing by order, the system will um, ask us to weigh all items that belong to a specific uh, production order uh, together. Uh, we also have the notion of catch weight, should at that ever be uh, appropriate, so that we can manage products which have a variable weight and that we can manage them then in dual units of measure. Eh? So on the one hand, an, uh, a quantity unit of measure and on the other hand, a, uh, a net weight uh, um, unit of measure. We also have the possibility to define a number of uh, attributes for uh, for products so for instance if we would like to uh, uh, register the country of uh, origin uh, that is uh, somewhat uh, something we um, we could um, arrange uh, and then the system would uh, require us to enter information about the country of origin of of this particular batch of a, of a product and that can then again also be used in batch batch management uh, there is also a possibility of uh, uh, of um, specifying uh, whether 
uh, labels need to be printed at the uh, receipt of the, um, uh, the product. Huh? So for instance, I could specify here that upon receipt of a pallet of this product, I could have an item label report printed automatically, and I could specify here the number of copies. Huh? So for instance, if I would have one pallet um, of this product containing 50 bags, I could say upon receipt of, the, uh, of this product, print one pallet label and 50 labels for the bags. That's also a possibility that, uh, that we could uh, do. Uh, and also here in the purchasing tab, we could specify that uh, a label should be printed upon reception. So there are a number of possibilities uh, for label printing. And on the other hand, so these are uh, system uh, initiated uh, label printing. On the other hand, we also have the possibility to, uh, uh, to have uh, label printing in um, the uh, uh, inventory operations. Yes, in the inventory operations, we also have the possibility to print on an ad hoc basis uh, item labels uh, um, when it is required during goods receipt uh, by uh, operators. Okay. So that's what uh, about the item master data extensions. Uh, so let's now uh, proceed with the um, uh, inbound logistics uh, processes. Okay, so in, uh, in this part of the demo, I would like to show you how the uh, product uh, program actually inbound logistics processes uh, work. Um, I will take you through a good seat. Um, I will show you uh, inventory reporting and also the uh, put away process of uh, products into the warehouse. So uh, let me take you to the uh, inbound logistics uh, process now. Uh, to start this uh, process we um, start off with uh, creating a purchase order in sub business one. So we uh, select our uh, vendor, we select our uh, product, select the quantity that we uh, want to order. So in this case, we're going to order <coughs> one food pallet, which is 50 bags of uh, uh, this product. So we add the purchase order. And the moment that the purchase order is uh, added, it is uh, already transferred to the RF terminal. So if we go to the RF terminal and start the inbound logistics process by clicking on purchase, reception. We indicate now the receiving dock where we're going to receive the goods. And then we can um, process the uh, goods receipt in various ways. Uh, if we would have uh, received an electronic uh, message from our supplier stating the uh, contents of the logistic unit that he would be sending to us, we could um, link this to the uh, GS1 barcodes and we could um, just scan the barcodes and the system would recognize the, uh, the goods receipt and its contents. Now there's also the possibility to go through the order and also if there is no reference to a purchase order, we can still um, execute a goods receipt. And we also have a container reception, so we, if we have um, a container containing various um, uh, purchase orders, we can uh, receive them uh, all at once. So if we now go through the uh, order, we see here the order that we have just created. And then the system asks us to specify whether we're going to receive identical logistic units or no identical logistic units. Suppose, for instance, that we would be receiving five pallets of the same product. We could uh, speed up the reception by indicating that we're receiving five identical logistic units instead of receiving them one by one. Now, in this case, it is a single pallet that we're receiving, so I press on no identical logistic units. I uh, scan the barcodes, I can scan the barcodes if they are on the product. Now in this example, we haven't got barcodes on there and I can always uh, also receive them if there is no label on the logistic unit. So I uh, select that and then the, ask, the system asks me to scan the product. So scan the barcode or select the product. So in this case, let me select it. 
here is my product. The system knows that this is a batch managed uh, product, so he asked me to identify the batch number. So in this case, this is a system generated uh, batch number. Uh, but of course, if there is a batch number in the barcode on the product, this will prevail and the system will take that one. Now, we um, uh, go one further uh, step further and the system asks now to specify the best before date. And as we have indicate, indicated that there is a default best before date of one year, the system suggests uh, as the expiry date of the best before date, 27th of March 2020. And then you ask me to uh, specify the quantity in kilos, in bags or in pallets. So in this case, it's one pallet. And the system is now uh, executing the, uh, uh, the uh, goods receipt. And it is creating at the same moment the uh, uh, label, the logistic label, to identify this uh, uh, logistic uh, unit. So what you see here on this logistic uh, label is the contents of this uh, logistic uh, unit in human readable format, but also in uh, uh, barcode format. So what you see here, the number below is the unique identification of the uh, logistic uh, unit. And what you see above there is the identification of the product. So the global trade item number of uh, the product. The uh, 15 indicates the uh, uh, best before date, so the 27th of March 2020. 37 specifies the quantity, so 500 kilograms, and 10 indicates the batch number that we have recorded. So in this uh, way, all information is recorded automatically in uh, the system, and we can attach this label to the uh, logistic uh, unit. Mm -hmm. So if we turn now to, um, to uh, uh, the Prodimax uh, tab, or no, first let me show you the goods receipt. So if we go to the goods receipt in sub-business one and we ask for the last goods receipt, you see here that we have received 50 bags of beef and that they are stored on our receiving dock uh, one, uh, that they have this uh, logistic unit identification that the quality status is uh, released. This is the batch number and this is the best before date. So all additional information that we have recorded during the goods receipt is stored also in the Prodimax tables in sub-business one. Now, in order to follow the, um, um, the inventory in re real time, we also have a uh, specific uh, inventory report in uh, Prodimax uh, WMS. So if we say, okay, show me the, uh, the uh, inventory for this product. Okay, so for our beef here, it will show me that I have uh, indeed a quantity of this uh, beef at my uh, storage location R0002 and that I have just received an additional logistic unit on my receiving dock of 500 kilogram. Okay. So what the system has done in the, in the meantime is that it has now also created a put away order uh, to put this quantity into the uh, warehouse. So if I go to uh, put away here, and I say, what are the goods that need to be put away from the receiving dock? Click from my receiving dock one. And there it tells me this is the logistic unit that needs to be put away from the receiving dock into the warehouse. So if I uh, now simulate scanning this barcode and I enter it here, I select this uh, logistic unit and then the system asks me, where do you want to uh, move this uh, this product. Now I can uh, select a location uh, and if I select a location that is not in line with the storage conditions of this product, the system will not allow me to, uh, to do that. Say, so for instance, if I say I want to move it at this location, uh, uh, 0003, then the system will tell me this storage location is not allowed for the item because I have reserved that location for another item. 
I can ask the system to suggest an empty location, and then it will suggest an empty location that is in line with the uh, with the storage conditions of the product. So, for instance, I could put this at a backup location in the warehouse, okay, and I can move it there. And if I now refresh my uh, uh, inventory report you will see that he has indeed updated the location of this product to RB0004. So I have moved it into my warehouse. So this concludes the, uh, the demonstration of the inbound logistics uh, process in uh, Prodium XWMS for Sub Business One. Now that we have seen the uh, inbound logistics uh, process in uh, Prodium XWMS for Submission 1, allow me now to, um, to uh, focus on the Prodium X production process, where I will um, take you through the following uh, uh, agenda. I'll first show you uh, the way that we um, have adapted the uh, Sub-Business 1 bills of materials. Then I'll take you through the production uh, order man management, uh, the picking for production, the uh, weighing operations and finally the uh, production execution and the receipt from and the issue for production. So uh, next I will show you how uh, Prodimex WMS supports weighing and production operations uh, using or extending the submission one functionality. Um, so to um, show you how we have extended the product X, uh, the sub business one uh, bills of materials, allow me to uh, pick one for you. So I have here a bill of material for natural beef recipe rolled food for dogs, so the premix. Uh, and on this uh, bill of material, I've indicated uh, for a quantity of, of ten kilograms. Uh, which components I need. So I need four kilograms of, of beef, two kilograms of beef liver, two kilograms of beef lung, one and a half kilo of wheat flour, and uh, half a kilo of, uh, uh, of herbs. Now uh, I can indicate uh, on this bill of materials also um, whether a um, um, a component has to be lined up. And what does it mean lined up? Uh, if I have product that is stored in a silo or a tank, then I don't need to get that from the uh, uh, warehouse, but I can consume that immediately from the, um, uh, from the silo or the tank itself. And in this case, we have one product here, so the whole, whole um, wheat uh, flour, which is stored in a silo. So I will consume that product in production directly from that silo. Then we can also indicate here uh, the quantity tolerance that uh, we um, um, uh, can apply. So if we say we need four kilograms, is that absolute or is there a quantity tolerance? So in this case, we have a quantity tolerance of 5%. And then we have the uh, production order start condition. So what uh, needs to be uh, uh, needs to be done. So we need to have the component on the input in order to start production. And in this case, uh, we have also uh, indicated here whether weighing is needed. Huh? Now, in this case, in this example, I've only indicated weighing needed for the first um, uh, component, huh? and I've put the other components on false. But in a normal uh, production operation, you would, of course, weigh all components. So this is the... Um, the bill of material uh, that um, we have extended with uh, some uh, Prodimex uh, information. Now, if we want to create a, uh, an, uh, uh, a production order based on this, we go to the production order in Sub Business One. We select our uh, product and we take here our. Uh, is it this one? Yes, the natural beef recipe rolled for uh, uh, food for, uh, for dogs mix. Uh, so what you see here is we have here the base quantities for, uh, for one kilogram of, of the product. So if we say we're going to produce uh, 20 kilograms, the system will recalculate that. 
and it will say okay that we actually if we want to produce 20 kilograms these are the quantities that we need mm -hmm. now the other thing that we uh, do in, in Prodimax that is that we assign this also to a production line and so we uh, I explained that in the organization structure we can define production lines and I'm now going to define that I'm going to produce this product on my production line one okay so so this is my uh, production line uh, one. Uh, okay, so I add the uh, production order, and if I take it again, I can release it. And the moment it is released, it will be uh, assigned to the production line that I have here. Okay, I can update this. And I can also now create the way order that is associated with this, uh, this uh, product. Okay, I create the way order. And you see here that he has now created a way order for only one component, as I had indicated that the others did not need to be, uh, to be weighed. So I will now have to weigh this component before I can actually start uh, production. Okay. So the next step is that I'm going to, um, to um, uh, transfer the products from the warehouse into the uh, uh, production uh, zone. So let me show you again how it's uh, set up. So if we go to our production zone, you see here that I have here my production line. It's here. It has an input location, which you can see here. It has an output location, which you can see here, and it has a rest location. We have associated the silo tank to it. So in this case, we are going to use silo tank one to consume the whole wheat flour that we need. And we have our weighing room um, here set up to, uh, to uh, uh, execute the way order that, that was uh, created. And furthermore, we will also uh, use a movable location. So we will use a, an, uh, an, uh, an, uh, a picking cart to bring the goods from the, uh, from the warehouse into the, um, uh, into the uh, production zone. Huh? So we will use one of those days picking carts to do that uh, uh, transfer of products from the warehouse to the production zone. Okay, so let's now go to um, production on our RF terminal and we see here the option picking for production. So that's what we're going to do first. So we click on picking for production, normal picking for production. And then it tells me, well, we have got here a, uh, uh, a production order that we need to uh, pick for. So um, yes, we select it. We select our picking card. And now the system tells me what we need to get uh, and pick from the, um, uh, from the warehouse. Okay, so it tells me eight kilograms of this product, four kilograms of that, four of that. So it tells me now, uh, okay, this is the location that you need to go to. You can pick the entire uh, logistic unit or you can pick a part of it so I'm going to pick only a part of it I select I scan the logistic unit and I'm telling he tells me you need 0 0.8 back so I'm going to pick one full bag of 10 kilos okay that item is picked now he tells me you need four kilograms of that also there, I'm not going to pick the full pallet, but only part of it. So I scan the logistic unit. Also here it tells me you need 0.4 bag, so I'm going to take one full bag. Logistic unit items are moved. The next product, also pick a partial logistic unit. And also in this case, I'm going to pick one bag. And then the final product, 
also a log a partial logistic unit. And here's also a full bag of product. Okay, now the system tells me there are no more items to pick. The items picked on the movable location need to be moved. Please enter the destination location. So I now need to move them into the production zone. So I click on OK and it tells me you need to bring this now to our production one in location. In location. And they are moved. No more items to pick. And if I now go to the inventory report and I look at what is on my input location, he will show me indeed that we have the four products that I have picked are now stored at the production input location. Okay, so we have now moved the uh, product that we uh, need for our production order to the production input location, but there still is uh, an, another step that we need to conclude, namely the uh, weighing step. So we have created a weighing order for um, one of the components in the uh, in the uh, uh, production uh, order. So in order to execute the uh, um, the production and the weighing uh, steps, we have another application that runs on a uh, touch screen or on a uh, production uh, terminal where we can do both production as weighing operations. So if I go here to uh, um, weighing and I click on my weighing room uh, one, and then I see that I have a way order for my uh, production order here. And he tells me that I need to weigh uh, this product here, so my beef, for this production order. So he tells me there is uh, 10 kilograms available on the input location. And I need to, uh, to uh, um, complete or weigh uh, 8 kilograms. So if I now proceed with that. I can uh, now get an interface which is normally linked to a weigh scale where I can uh, do the, uh, the weighing operation now and I can specify here that I'm going to weigh in this case 8 kilos and 50 grams and that is within the tolerance of 5% uh, deviation that is allowed. So I'm now saying weigh this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what you see now is that he has now created a new logistic unit uh, that is identified by its uh, proper uh, uh, SSCC, and that is uh, to uh, identify the quantity that I have weighed uniquely for traceability uh, purposes hmm, further down the, the road. Hmm. So I have now this uh, uh, SSCC here, so if I finish now the weighing process, okay, I have completed the weighing, and if I now return to my inventory report, you will see at my production input location okay i have now the same quantities that i had before but from my beef i have now created a specific weight quantity weight quantity of 8.05 kilograms which is uniquely identified by its proper scc and that will play a role in the traceability because I will then now know which SCC I have used to move product into the final uh, product. Okay, let's continue now with the, uh, the production operation. So we're now going to uh, production. On my production line one, where he shows me that I have indeed got a production order for this product. And I can now start production because all products are on my input location and the component that needed to be weighed has been weighed. So I can start production and the system will now generate a batch number for the production order. 
it will ask for a best before date for the production order. And there also I have put that for the production, for the product that we're going to produce. The uh, uh, expiry date is one year from now. So we suggest 27th of March, 2020. And then it tells me what is needed to, uh, to start uh, production. Now I can start adding items to use, okay? And I can move the, all items or I can move them item by item. So in this case, move an item. I can now scan the SCCC of the product that I have here. So the weight product. So I copy that SCCC. I return here. And I enter the SCCC of the weight quantity. Okay seat with this product that has been moved now onto the production line and then you see here the other products that uh, where I have not done a weighing operation so there I'm going to add the items to use move an item no SCCC select the product I'm going to take the beef liver now and I'm going to use one bag completely in production then I'm going to Add items to use, move one item, no SCCC, select the product. Now it's the beef lung. Also one bag. And then the herbs, add items to use, move an item, no SCCC. And you see here that I've still got the beef here because actually I still have got a quantity of 1.95 kilo on my production uh, input location. Okay, also one bag. So everything is now uh, on my production line itself. So if I now go to my um, production line itself, so over here, you will now see that on my production line I have all the quantities of products, so the 10, one bag, so 10 kilograms of the other products. And here I have the actual weight quantity for the beef with its associate SCCC. And now we can start production in uh, Prodimex. So I tell him now produce. And now he is going to create the actual product that um, um, was uh, mentioned in the production order. So other task, I'm not going to put it on a logistic carrier. So I have uh, produced 20 kilos of uh, the product. And it tells me here that based on uh, the quantity that I have entered, I could have a maximum of 21 kilos. Okay, so 20 kilos are produced now. The item is produced. And what he now creates is also a label to identify again the item that I have produced, namely the natural beef recipe rolled foods for dogs mix. And he also gives me the information about the quantity, so 20 kilos, best before, production date and batch number in human readable format and also again here in barcoded uh, uh, format. Okay, so I now can stop production. And then I'm going to uh, consume the quantities. Now, in this case, uh, I have uh, the, uh, the, the quantity here. Yes, I have used four kilograms of uh, uh, liver. But if I would say, well, I only have a rest of five and I have wasted one kilo, I can also register waste here now. Okay, the same here. Let's say that I only have, uh, and here, let's say that in this case, I have uh, consumed it correctly. And then he asked me for the weight. So again, I can uh, link this to a weighing scale. So it's 20 kilos that I have produced. Okay, so now the item has been produced. And if I now look at my production one output location, You will see now that I have here my final product, uh, which is now moved to my production output location. Here is the SCCC of, of the product. And if I look at the other location, so if I look at 
uh, my locations prop one to prop one R. Then you will notice, so if I have them uh, here uh, and I end, so on my input location, I still have the remaining 1.95 kilograms of beef that I have not used, that I have not weighed. Uh, I have on my output location the uh, uh, 20 kilograms of product that I have produced. And on my rest location, I have the uh, remainder of the product that has not been used in the production uh, order. And then again, if we now turn to the uh, production order in sub business one, we can now see that it's closed and we can have a relationship map of this production order. And in this relationship map, you will see that we have here booked a receipt from production, which is actually the quantity of product that we have produced. We have here an issue for production, and that is the quantity uh, of whole wheat flour, which has been consumed automatically from the silo in which it was stored. Hmm? It was lined up for production, so we did not have to move it into production. It has been consumed automatically from the uh, silo. Then we have the issue for production of the actual quantities that we have used in the uh, production order. And finally, we have also an issue for production of the spillage uh, and the waste that we have made. Huh? So you, uh, while I was recording the, um, uh, the quantities, I said that we had spilled one kilogram of beef liver and one kilogram of beef lung. So and in this way, Prodimax WMS for sub business one also supports uh, production operations in uh, sub business one. In this uh, next part of the demo, I will take you through the uh, Prodimax outbound logistics uh, process. So I will show you how uh, we uh, execute and manage the uh, picking, packing and shipping operations with uh, Prodimax WMS for sub business one. As for the outbound logistics uh, process, that starts off with the uh, creation of a sales order in uh, Sub Business One. So, I'm going to create a sales order. I select my customer here. Okay, I select my product. So let's take two products here, two trays of this product, and let's take another product as well. And let's also take two trays of that. I specify the delivery date and I add sales order. <clears throat> Now, in order to uh, proceed with the um, picking process, the system um, first generates a pick list proposal, and that is a proposal that checks whether the quantity that is required to fulfill the sales order is available. <clears throat> and it also hard allocates the batch of uh, the product based on the shelf life uh, conditions. So in this case, you can see here, that we had an order quantity of two trays of each of these products and the system has been capable of reserving two trays of each of these uh, products. So there is no open quantity, so we can supply the, uh, um, the order. And here you see that the system has also reserved a specific batch number for this uh, delivery based on the shelf life conditions of this uh, particular uh, customer. Mm -hmm. So it has reserved this batch number with this best before date of, for this product, and it has um, reserved this batch number of this best before date of this uh, product. Mm -hmm. So if we look at these uh, two products, and we look at the inventory we have of them, you will notice that the system has reserved this batch here. So it has the reserved the batch with an expiry date of 
27th of February 2021, None, even though we still have stock in our uh, uh, inventory for that expires or that has a best before of the 5th of July 2019. And that has everything to do with the shelf life conditions that we can specify uh, on the uh, products, because we can also specify for a particular customer which uh, shelf life conditions apply to him. And based on that, the system will reserve the batch with the uh, um, uh, appropriate best before date. Now, um, we have now the uh, uh, pick list proposal available. This is uh, all right, so we can now generate the pick list. Okay, so we have now here the, the pick list. We can still assign it to a specific shipping dock and then we can update it. And now the pick list is available for picking on the, uh, on the, the uh, shop floor. Now, I currently have attached a small um, uh, scanner to my, um, to my computer to show you how this uh, process works based on the barcode. So what you see here is that I have here uh, an item label of uh, the, uh, these uh, products. And, uh, this is the product with the best before date of the 5th of July 2019. This is uh, the product with the best before date of the 18th of uh, July 2019. And this is the, the one with the best before date of 27th of February 2021. So now you will, I will show you how the system will respond if we now select the, the wrong product. So if we now return to our uh, RF terminal, we're now going through the sales process. We're going through the uh, picking process. Here it, he shows me the pick list that was created for this sales order. So I select it. And he tells me now that I need to go to uh, these two locations to pick these uh, items. So first I need to go to uh, location uh, 009. I'm going to put this on a movable location. Okay, I go to my location, my first location, I select it. In this case, I'm going to select the product manually with the, the batch and I'm going to take two trays of it. So I have picked it. Now the other product that I'm going to pick is the one that I've shown you the uh, labels for. So what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to the location, but instead of now selecting the product, I'm going to scan the product and I'm going to intentionally first scan the wrong barcode. So the one with an expiry date that uh, is uh, less than expected and it tells me you cannot pick from this batch number and that's before date. See, so in this way, the system will prevent by scanning that I pick the wrong product. So if I now scan the correct product with the correct best before date and I enter it, then he lets me proceed and he tells me, okay, you need to have two trays of this product. So the items are picked now. And in order to proceed now with the shipping, uh, I need first need to uh, pick the, the product. So if I now look at my inventory report and I look at what I have, have I got stored on my movable location one, he will now show me that I have uh, two trays or 48 jars of uh, uh, these two products on my movable location. So I'm now going to take my movable location to my uh, packing station. So I'm going to my uh, terminal that I showed you uh, before. So I'm now going to do uh, packing on my packing line one. And I'm now going to enter the picking card that I've picked on. I'm not going to uh, pick this on a logistic or I'll, I'll put it in a, in a carton, okay? And then I've got my two products here. So I have got here my clover honey and I have got here my uh, molasses. 
So I'm going to pack these products now. So I'm going to add these items now to my new logistic unit that I have created. So I add the items. You see that he generates a new logistic unit identifier. Again, very important for the traceability. And I'm now going to finish this logistic unit. And he tells me that this needs to go to my shipping dock one. And what the system now generates is again, an, uh, a label, a shipping label, again with uh, the identification of the SECC. But as this is a logistic unit that contains two different products, the GS1 ruling says that only the SECC is required as that is the identifier that uh, is used or that ensures the full traceability uh, throughout the supply chain. We have now moved this to our shipping dock one. So again, if we go in our inventory report, we see that we have got on our shipping dock, we have now a logistic unit containing, consisting of a carton, two trays of this product and two trays of this other product. And that's the one that we're going to ship now. So I'm going to my RF terminal again, click on shipping from my shipping dock one based on a pick list. And this is the pick list that I picked for. And I have to, to deliver this logistic unit for this uh, order, for this pick list. I scan it. It has been loaded. And what is happening now is that uh, the uh, delivery report is printed. Hmm? So he gives me here now, we have delivered a logistic unit with this identification containing these products of these batches and this best before uh, dates. And if we now return to sub business one and we go to the uh, sales delivery tab, you see here that the delivery that we have just executed or the shipping that we have just executed is now registered uh, here as well. And this shows you how we have an end-to-end -end integration from goods to seed up to uh, storage, up to production, uh, up to delivery uh, with Sub Business One. To uh, conclude this uh, demonstration, I will give you a brief overview of the Prodimax traceability capabilities. On the one hand, in the forward traceability um, process, which means from goods to seed, um, through uh, storage, through uh, uh, to uh, delivery. And also the backward traceability um, process, which is uh, particularly important in production operations, where you can trace back a final product to its components and all the batches uh, of products that you have used in, uh, in that uh, product. Well, to uh, end this uh, demonstration, let you all, me also show you a, a number of uh, ca capabilities of uh, Prodimex in the context of uh, traceability. Um, within the uh, Prodimex module, we also have a specific uh, report that uh, 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 manages uh, traceability. Uh, so let me uh, take here a particular product, uh, for instance, uh, this one here. And let's ask for a forward traceability report, which means from the goods to seed, through storage, through uh, shipping. So this is a product that we only have uh, um, uh, managed in the warehouse. We have not done production operations on it. So if we look at that, what we find then is we get an overview of all the batches of this product that we have, that have passed through our uh, warehouse. And for each of these batches, so let me take a particular one, for each of these batches, we have registered all information regarding the uh, the processes in the warehouse. Now in this, for this batch, for instance, we can see here, which was the sub business one purchase delivery note, when was it received, uh, which was the uh, the business partner. And we also have here the identification of the logistic unit on which this uh, product entered our uh, uh, warehouse. If we go to deliveries, 
we see that we also have a delivery here uh, of this uh, product to this uh, customer and we have also a link of the SSCC on which it moved out of the warehouse. Then we have a registration here of the internal movements. And then also, in this case, quality status changes. So in this case, for this particular product, we had a quality status change from released to sampling and testing. We have also the link here who was the user who did that. And we see that it was eventually again released. And when we see here, yes, you see here that uh, there was a uh, uh, pending laboratory uh, analysis reason for this and it was QC cleared. So this is the, uh, uh, the forward traceability um, uh, report. Now, if it comes to um, produced products, then we have a backward traceability product. So let us uh, select uh, the um, product that we have just produced here. So we have our um, uh, docs mix. We choose that and we say that we have a backward traceability report. And when we look at that report, we have uh, get a different picture because then we have here the uh, batches of the end product that we have created. And for each of these batches, we have an overview of the components that have gone into it. And of each of these components, we also have the batch that was used for it. So we have a linking of the end product, of the batch of the end product with all the batches of the ingredients that have gone in to that. And for all of these, these uh, products, we have the uh, the goods receipt. Now, there have been no deliveries because this is not a product that we sell, but we use it in production. We have here all the movements that we have made of, of this batch. Uh, quality status changes have not been there. We have here all the issues for production of this batch of product. Receipt of production is, not, of course, not applicable, but it's only a applicable for this product. So there we have the receipt for, uh, for production. So now this is quite a simple uh, example of backward traceability, but this can go very far. So if I allow me to select an, uh, another example that I uh, have here. Um, yes, let us take this one, for instance. There we have a backward traceability report of, uh, of a product, again. Uh, not just consisting of simple in ingredients, but of, say, intermediate products. And so what we have here is we have an intermediate uh, uh, or the carton, then we have the lids, then we have uh, an, uh, an, 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 an uh, intermediate product, which in its turn also can consists of intermediate products. And you see that in this way, you can have a very detailed overview of um, what are all the products and intermediates that have gone into a specific other product. And in this way, we can ensure really the full traceability at uh, batch uh, level. So this concludes the uh, demonstration of uh, Prodimax WMS for uh, food production and distribution um, uh, operations. I hope this was um, uh, interesting and helpful for you. Thank you very much.